What social change did the workhouse bring? The workhouse, of course, encapsulated physically and uh, notionally the, the poor. Who were these people? Why were they so destitute in the first place? So although the workhouse was the focus of uh, these people and their um, problems, the broader problem, the cause of them being in a workhouse, of course, was societal. So we had people like Dickens writing about what he found in workhouses to bring people's attention to it. We had the Chartists who were marching for improved conditions in society as a whole, and of course, allowing them the vote. But we also had then thinkers and philosophers and social scientists, we call them now, such as Engels and Marx and Carlyle and Malthus, uh, writing papers on how society should look at the poor. Problems in factories to do with health and accidents led to factories acts to improve conditions there and safety. And many, many were passed in the 19th and early 20th centuries, which uh, tried to make factories safer places for people. So the, you could almost say that the suffering of the poor uh, provided the, um, the steam power, as it were, for change, the energy for change. Their suffering was great, but the outcome eventually, by the end of the century, was a much improved uh, picture. And one can read, when you think of 1851, you know, the great exhibition as being the zenith, perhaps, of Victorian achievement. But I don't think so. I think technically that was true. But it's not until the end of that century, when public health had been uh, uh, used to bring about much improved conditions in towns and cities, uh, the, the medicine and, and science had made great progress that helped society tackle these ills. I think it's the end of the 19th century was probably the golden age of Victorian uh, revolution, industrial revolution. And um, of course, great riches emanated from that. There again, though, you see that there's a huge imbalance between those who have and have not. I forget the exact figures, but by the end of the 1890s, I think there were fewer than uh, a dozen people who owned something like 40% of the whole GDP. It was uh, really extreme examples of riches. And here in Cardiff, of course, we've got the Marquis of Butte, who was in uh, 1913 declared the richest man in the world um, with vast fortunes that thankfully he also gave away. He was very generous. But um, there was still that human sludge at the bottom of society that had to be dealt with the poor and those who could not help themselves.